Hi, my name is Aaron Linsdow. I'm a polar explorer and motivational speaker. It's review day! Today I'm going to compare three separate Western mountaineering sleeping bags. I'm going to talk about where to use them, how much loft there is, the comparison between the two to help you make a better buying decision. And I'm going to talk about the Western mountaineering Puma, the Western mountaineering Antelope, and the Western mountaineering Megalite. When you're looking for a sleeping bag, what sleeping bag do you choose? That's a really tough thing because there are just so many options on the market. I've pretty much standardized on Western mountaineering sleeping bags. In my personal opinion, they are the best expedition and outdoor down bags made on the market today. Uh, as a word of disclosure, I am not sponsored by Western mountaineering. I don't get uh, free sleeping bags. I don't get money for these videos, anything. I'm just sharing my experience with you so that you can make an informed decision in whatever you might buy. Uh, just if you can take a second, please hit the subscribe button. If you uh, just get your phone out when you're watching this video, scroll down, hit the subscribe. That will help me continue this channel and helps me out for this free information. And also, I will put links below to all three of these sleeping bags so you can go check them out on Amazon for yourself. Uh, just a word of warning, when you click on there, you're gonna see that price is really like, whoa! And yes, these things are stupendously expensive, but I've used them in extreme conditions in the Arctic, in, on Denali, in Yellowstone in the winter, minus 45 in storms. So highly, highly recommended. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the loft of the three different bags how foofy they are, if you will. And I'm gonna use the, the ruler technique. It's not terribly scientific, but it'll give you a good idea of how these three different bags compare. So this bag, the Megalite, is rated to 25 degrees, maybe 30 degrees. I have taken this bag down to five degrees above zero. So, well, was it uh, uh, like 27 degrees below freezing? It was pretty chilly, but because of this bag, the baffle design, you can actually fluff this bag and get more down on your chest and it'll keep you warmer. The Western Mountaineering uh, Antelope does have that ability with a continuous baffle system. This bag is rated for five degrees. I've been in minus 25 degrees sleeping, maybe minus 30 because my toes hurt for a long time uh, with my boots, but it, it definitely did the job. I was chilly. Uh, in this bag, the Antelope is rated to minus 25 degrees, and I took that bag down to minus 45. As long as I didn't wriggle around, I wasn't too bad. It was pretty chilly, but it, I survived. Uh, that's one thing about the Western Mountaineering bags, is that their temperature rating is for comfort not for survival. And that, that's a key thing. And that's a very hard piece of information to find out is some sleeping bag manufacturers actually rate their sleeping bag temperatures for survival. So you think, oh, I've got a 25 degree bag and I take it down to 25 and I'm fine. And you're sitting there <laughs> and freezing your keister off, that's why. My experience has been with the Western Mountaineering that these bags are rated for that comfort level. So if the temperature drops another 10, 15, even 20 degrees, I've been fine. It's a little cool, but I was never freezing my butt off, which is really nice. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to lower the camera here and I'm gonna give you just an end on view of the different sleeping bags and kind of, I'll do a little fly around to show you the what they look like. And you'll notice down when you when you first mush it, it does take a while to recover, and that's just the nature of down. Because that, those down feathers from geese get mushed. And yes, they are real geese, and that's just how it works. Because geese taste good, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the camera off, and we're going to fly around, and I'll show you the different bags here. Okay, so what we're going to do is do an end-on comparison. So there is the Megalite the antelope and then the puma so you can see 
Let me put all three foot boxes together just so you can get a better comparison of how substantial they are, all right? So again, the, the Puma, the Antelope, and the Megalite, and you can see them stepping down. And if I had my, uh, my bison bag, it would be this much higher. That thing's crazy. Of course, it's over $1,000. So what we'll do is we'll, uh, hopefully there's enough light here. This is the Puma, the Antelope, and the, West, or in the Megalite. Let me show you from this angle what they look like. More substantial on the antelope and even more substantial on the puma. Now this is one thing the colors have changed over the years. I bought these bags quite a long time ago so we'll, uh, we'll look at here versus here. You can see it's much thicker and then this thing is supremo insane. All right. Now what we're going to do is, let me uh, actually pan for you just to show you the volume difference in those guys. There we go. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to set the camera up and we're going to lower the tripod so you can see just what exactly the loft is on these bags. I've measured it before, but it's always fun to check. And that's one thing about down too, is you want to make sure you store the down in an uncompressed state. Because if you store it compressed, over time it will actually damage the down. And that's something for the expense of these sleeping bags you do not want to do. Alrighty. So this is the Megalite bag. And what we're going to do is we'll take a, a mid-chest measurement. Uh, oh, maybe, maybe down at the knees. Here we go. Yeah. And I'll take my ruler there. Let me make sure you can see that. Good, okay. A little shady here. Now I'll mush that down, and that is at about four and a half inches of loft. So you'll see the bag as it compresses or decompresses. You fluff it back, and that down comes back pretty quick. Okay, and the next bag is the antelope and we'll go at about the same position and I'll begin compressing the bag here All right okay you see that's a lot more loft and that's five and a half that's really six inches of loft so that you for you go from about four and a half to six so that's a lot more loft on the antelope and now the puma it won't seem as much Simply because of the design of the bag is a little bit different. Okay, if I can mash this with my ruler. Okay, here we go, right? Oh, let me change the camera here. There we go. Okay, so we're going to start and hopefully be pretty scientific. That is eight inches of loft. That's a huge, huge difference. So let me write that down here on my handy dandy piece of paper. So the puma is eight inches of loft, the antelope is six and a half inches of loft, and then the megalite is four and a half inches of loft. Uh, just as a word of comparison, my bison bag is between 10 and 12 inches of loft. So it's a huge difference. So what the, the one subscriber suggests is please stomp on the bags. I'm not gonna maybe stomp on them, but just step on them so you can get a, another visual cue of how the loft is different between these bags. So I thought that was a pretty slick idea. I've given you a scientific measurement, but it's always kind of fun just to mush the sleeping bags. All right. So I've got my cool, sexy, um, smart wool socks here. Let me flip that around. So. I'm going to put my left foot in here, and my right foot in here. And you can see a huge difference in the compression between this bag and that bag. So the, this is the Mega Light, and this is the Antelope. And now we're going to compare these two. So let me turn the camera a little bit. So non-scientific, but much more visually impactful. 
Now these bags don't look super different, but the thickness you can start seeing, let me turn them here just a bit. Now you can start seeing this bag fluffing up a lot more compared to the antelope. And that, that's the thing about that bag there. So if I step near the foot box area, you can see just how much bigger the puma is compared to the antelope. And then we'll do that again with the antelope and the megalite. This is actually pretty fun. I love these viewer request videos. Hey, check it out. So boom, from megalite to antelope. And now we're going to go from megalite to puma. I mean, this one looks like a sad sack compared to this. This looks substantial. But this is also a very heavy bag. So bringing that up, let's do a weight comparison of these three bags just to give you an idea of the difference between them. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to get my scale out and I'm going to try and do this. This is not easy because these bags are so absurdly huge. Is I'm going to turn the scale on. Oops. Let me go get my other scale. I need a battery. All right, so I got my scale that actually does have a battery in there. That was a little embarrassing, but no problem. So now what we're going to do is we're going to tear out the scale. All right, so the scale currently reads zero pounds. And I'm going to bring the, the Megalite, and I don't even know if I'm going to be able to do this. I'll, I'll try and compress the bag down just a bit. And we'll see, see if we can get it on there real quick before it expands. And whoa, nope, that's going to be very, very difficult to do. Okay, so that's one pound, eight ounces. So that's a one pound, eight ounce bag that you can, maybe one pound, nine ounce, let's see. Yeah, one pound, nine ounce that you can reliably go down to 25 degrees with. And I have taken it down to five degrees with. That's pretty impressive. So one pound, nine ounces, I mean, that, that, that's like nothing. Your backpack probably weighs three pounds plus. So now we're going to do the antelope here. I'm going to have to mush it even more in order for this to fit on the scale. And hopefully I'll get a good quick measurement. Yeah. And you can see how compressed these bags can become. And hopefully I'll get it on there without it expanding. So two pounds, 13 ounces. There you go. So a substantial difference there. So the Megalite was one pound, nine ounces. And this is two pounds, 13 ounces. And that's almost all down feathers because that Microlite fabric is super light. And now the coup de gras, bum bum bum. And you'll see how much harder it is for me to smush this puma down because of the gore fabric here. Ah. This is much harder to put in the stuff sack too, but there's just that much more down in the bag. Oh, come on, baby. All right, squish down, squish down. Hopefully I'll be able to get a good measurement before it expands. Four pounds, three ounces. Boom, there we go. So that is, again, a substantial difference. Four pounds, three ounces. And the, the Puma, a lot of the weight too, the change is in the, the Gore Windstop fabric. Oh, I guess I gotta lay down here. Let me tilt the camera up. All right. Is the Gore Windstop fabric adds a lot of weight to the sleeping bag, but it makes it much more versatile. If you're going to go into extreme environments, uh, <laughs> Microfiber, eh, I get the Gore Wind Stop. It's a lot better choice. So whether you choose, I call this the Purple Slug, the Megalite, which is a 30 degree bag. You can see that it weighs a one pound, nine ounces, and it has, was it four and a half inches of total loft versus the Antelope, which I've, I've taken this to the Rockies, the Sierras. Where else have I taken that? Um, yeah, that, that's it and camped at five degree temperatures. So it, it survives well. 25 degree temperatures is like nothing. The antelope, I have personally used this in the Arctic and in Yellowstone in the winter where it got, you know, it gets a minus 10 degrees. 
I've used this in Greenland and the Arctic. It got to minus 25 and 30. It was a bit chilly, but it survived, no problem. And I also used this on Kilimanjaro and Mount Elbrus as well. Uh, both weren't that terribly cold. And then this bag, the Puma, I've taken down to minus 45 degrees in winter, and that was in Yellowstone. No problem, it was a little bit uh, chilly, like I said, but as long as I didn't wriggle, it's okay. And uh, I've also used this bag on Denali a couple times. That is an extreme mountain. It's probably the worst weather mountain on earth, especially for the seven summits. And I've taken this down to minus 45 degrees. So whether you choose the, the basic bag, the Megalite, which just has a standard drawstring and no neck baffles or anything, or you need to step it up to the, uh, the Antelope, which does have neck baffles. And oh, by the way, this sleeping bag, even though it's Megalite, Western Mountaineering does put a side baffle in there. So you do not get a cold zipper, which is freaking nice. No freezing zippers. So all their bags have this, and that's a huge differentiation. That's why one of the reasons why I went with Muster Mountaineering is because of this extra baffle and the extra stiff tape here. Compare that to the Antelope, which actually is an expedition bag. Not only does it have a single baffle on one side, and the stiff tape here, it has a neck baffle. Check my video out to see what that looks like. It's, it's a little claustrophobic, but it's okay. And then compare that to the Puma heavy, or a midweight to heavy expedition bag, depending on what you're doing. And this guy has baffles on both sides of the zipper. Plus it has a much tougher neck uh, setup and a thicker baffle for your neck. So whichever sleeping bag you choose, depending on which activity you're doing, you can make the right choice there. So my name is Aaron Linsdow. I'm a polar explorer and motivational speaker. Please like and comment on my video. Leave me a comment. Give me some ideas for other videos you'd like for comparison to things I've done or maybe things that I could do for you. Also support my channel on Venmo and PayPal, and please subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.